friends for such a long time, Ben. I, I'm sure you understand how I feel about it. Of course I understand it. I guess I'm just sentimental about the old place. What is it, Ben? Something familiar about that man over there. And besides, I don't really need the money. Of course not. Well, what time is the next stage? Sacramento stage in about an hour. You sure there's nothing sooner? No, mister, that's it. Emily, excuse me. That man, I'm sure I know him. Give me a ticket on that Sacramento stage, please. Excuse me, sir, but... It is Frank Metford, isn't it? I don't believe that I... Ben. Ben Cartwright. Frank, I got it. It's good to see you. I didn't know you were in this part of the country. Well, I, I live here. Emily, I want you to meet Frank Medford, the bravest, finest man I ever knew. Oh, come on, Ben. No, oh, it's true. It's true. This is Miss Emily Colfax. A pleasure, Miss Colfax. How do you do? During the wild days of my misspent youth, Frank and I conquered Nicaragua. The two of you? Well, there were a few hundred others along. Well, we didn't need them. At least he didn't need them. Well, I have to be getting home. Will you be in town long, Mr. Medford? The Colonel Medford, ma'am. I don't know. My schedule is rather rigid. Long enough to have the pleasure again, I hope. Perhaps. It's been very nice seeing you. Goodbye, Ben. Oh, bye, Emily. Now, what are you doing in Virginia City? Well, I'm just passing through, Ben. I'm on my way to Sacramento. Well, you're going to have to spend a few days at my place. I have business. Oh, uh, look, after all these years, you're not going to get away as easily as all that. Well, no, it's settled, settled very... Frank. It's settled. It's all settled. Now, come on. <laughs> come back. Here, 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 here. Let me take that. Got a step, Frank? You never could keep step, right? right. <laughs> hey, yep, dude. Seventy of us, remember? Yeah. Well, I went into the one and only cantina, and there was Ben Cartwright with four of those girls all to himself. <laughs> <laughs> now, what makes that feat even more remarkable is the fact that at that time, your father could not speak one word of Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, boy, how'd you do it? Oh, <laughs> the only thing I remember is that afternoon in the Plaza Royale. We'd just beaten off the troops, and there were, oh, I don't know, six of us to keep some sort of order in the plaza. And then they attacked again. Oh, maybe a hundred of them charging down the street. The thing I do remember is Frank standing all alone in the middle of that plaza, bullets kicking up all around him, cigars stuck in his teeth, lighting grenades and tossing them as fast as he could. He broke up that first charge single-handed. He'd have killed every one of us. Frank, I think that's, that's the bravest thing I ever saw. They should have given you a medal for that. Well, they did, after you left. That was when I was promoted to Colonel. After all, it's the least I could do for saving my pa's life. <laughs> oh, horse! Oh, hi, Paul. Didn't know we had company. Someone here I want you to meet. Now, remember me telling you once my ship was laid up and I heard there was a little excitement down in Nicaragua. You ain't figuring on going back. Well, possibly, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the fellow that talked me into going there years ago. Colonel Frank Metford, my son Eric, better known as Horse. 
I'm I... pleased to meet you, Hoss. Thank you, sir. Pleased to meet you, Colonel. My Paul's had a lot of good things to say about you. Uh, Paul, have you heard from Adam? Oh, yeah, yeah. I had a telegram. I think he's going to make the deal. Hot dogs. <laughs> then tomorrow, I'll, I'll go into town to see about the land. A little business deal we're working on, Frank. Little? We pull it off, it'll be about the biggest thing that's ever happened around here. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful to be young? When you're young, every deal is the biggest. <laughs> yes, I remember. You know, Ben, I often wondered uh, how you made out after we said goodbye in Nicaragua. Mm. I see now I had no reason to worry about you. Well, I have no complaints, Frank. From all appearances, you're a man of wealth. I have my three sons. They're my wealth. <laughs> what about yourself? I always figured you'd wind up at least a general. <laughs> well, soldiers of fortune, Ben, aren't really much in demand. So I went into commerce. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, I never married. I don't know, too busy making money, I guess. Uh, I've seen it happen. Oh, you're here on business, then. Yes, you might say that. Uh, I'm a director for the Haverford Company. They deal in farming and ranching equipment, you know? Yes, yes, and I do know indeed. Big company. I thought their operations were back east. We're expanding. That's why I'm here. I'm going to open up these western states of yours as new territory. I can get you all the business you want right here in Virginia City. Introduce you to all the right people. That wouldn't be necessary, Ben. I insist. But Ben, I... No arguments. <laughs> It was nice of you to drop by, Emily. My brother and I have been wondering why you turned down Ben Cartwright's offer for your land. Oh, it's out of sentiment, I suppose. It was my father's ranch, and I, I just keep hoping that someday I'll be able to put it to the proper use. Oh, Miss Emily? Frank? This is Asa and Will Flanders, one of my oldest and best friends, Colonel Frank Metford. And of course, you know Miss Emily. Yes, I do. Any friend of Ben's, always welcome here. Pleasure, sir. How, How are you, do? sir? Nice to meet you. Colonel, this is a surprise. I thought you might have left town. Oh, I, uh, I talked him out of that. As a matter of fact, he'll be here for a few more days, whether he likes it or not. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I'd introduce the Colonel to some of the town's influential citizens. <laughs> You're from the East, Colonel? Yes, New York and Philadelphia, mostly. Uh, I'm out here now trying to get the uh, feel of this area. Anything specific in mind? I'd rather not divulge that at the moment, gentlemen. However, confidentially, don't be surprised if some big Eastern money moves here soon. Really? Yes, as a matter of fact, if things work out as I feel they will, the sky may be the limit. Well, this all sounds very mysterious and important. Well, I know that you gentlemen have business to discuss, so, uh, Ben, if you have any other stops in mind... Well, Frank, I need a few minutes with uh, Will and Asa, but I thought we'd have lunch. Fine. Okay. I have to be going, too. Goodbye again, Colonel. Miss Colfax. Oh, Emily, uh, why don't you uh, have lunch with us? Frank, suppose you take Miss Emily to the hotel, and I'll join you in a few minutes, uh, if, if you're free. I would be honored, Miss Colfax. If I won't be keeping you from anything. Not at all. Well, gentlemen, a pleasure to meet you. Colonel. Well, what's the answer to my offer? Ben, we haven't quite made up our minds yet. Well, I don't think you'll get a better deal. You've been trying to sell Alder Valley for over a year without any takers. Well, that's just it. All of a sudden, you want to make a fast deal. Why? You holding something back on us, Ben? Asa, I'll tell you exactly why I want Alder Valley. Right at this very moment, my son Adam is trying to buy the whole Crow Track brand. They're selling out? Yes, they are. And that means about 3,000 head of cattle. Now, Adam can't close the deal until I'm assured of grazing land. You don't have enough grazing land on the Ponderosa? Not with an additional herd of that size. Now, gentlemen, I, I really do need an answer today, one way or another. It sounds fine to me, Ben. Good. How about it, Asa? I think I'd like to talk some more. Well, all right. 
I'll be having lunch. You know where I'll be. Thank you. Bye, Ben. You ruined the whole deal. I just think he's up to something. I don't care if he is. We're getting our money, aren't we? I'm going to take the deal. You mark my words. You'll see that I'm right. You didn't. I did. Rode right into the president's ball on a white mule. And won my bet with Commodore Vanderbilt. Well, what did they do? The president had me thrown out bodily. You deserved it. I agree. What hurts, though, is that uh, he still hasn't given me back my white mule. Oh, now you are exaggerating. Well, lovely ladies always inspire me to my best efforts. Now, if you were to walk in directors of Delmonico's, I guarantee you, you'd turn every head. Oh, oh, you do exaggerate. No. Not one little bit. If you'd like to come in, I'll have Martha make some refreshments. Well, thank you, Miss Emily, but uh, I do have some business to attend to. I've enjoyed this afternoon more than you can imagine. Oh, but I can imagine. I know how much I have enjoyed it. Good day, Colonel. Good day, Miss Emily. Well, I waited dinner for you, Miss Emily. Oh, I'm sorry, Martha. I was detained at lunch by a gentleman. A gentleman, Miss Emily? Yes, a fine gentleman from the East. Oh, now, Martha, don't look so shocked. He's a very dear friend of Ben Cartwright's. I think he may come calling. Well, I think that would be very nice. Do you? I wonder. Miss Emily, eight years is too long to sorrow over a young man who died. Now, when this gentleman comes calling, you be ready for him. That's what I say. All right, Martha. He is a very exciting gentleman. And it, it would be fun again. Clerk? Yes, sir. How much is that ticket to Sacramento? Seven dollars and a half. I don't seem to have that much on me. How far can I go for two dollars? Nowhere I know of. Mister, looks like you're stuck here for a little bit. We can forget about this patent reaper of yours. Very high profit item, Mr. Austin. I can't store nothing that size. Same goes for these gang heralds and cultivators. But they move very fast, sir. You might not even have time to uncrate them. You drummers, you're all the same. You'd lie to your own mothers. Look, mister, 
The most I can see my way clear to taking on be one of them plows. One plow? Out of all that I've shown you? One plow. That one, right there. I thought you were a man of vision and enterprise, Mr. Austin. Take it or leave it, mister. I will take it. Uh, let me see now, that's uh, $15 wholesale. Uh, Mr. Austin, I wonder if you could possibly let me have, uh, oh, say, uh, 750 of that on deposit now. I pay on delivery. Yes, I know, but um, it happens I'm uh, short of cash right now. Oh. Ordinarily, I don't know business that way, but uh, since you're a friend of Ben Cartwright's, uh, all right, I'll draw up a receipt. Thank you, sir. Colonel, how nice to see you. Why, good morning, Miss Emily. What can I do for you, Miss Colfax? Oh, you too, go on. I want to look at some material. Uh, Mr. Austin, as a matter of fact, I do have some other appointments. Uh, why don't I come back later? No need, won't take but a minute. Well, Miss Emily, you look very pretty this morning. Thank you. <laughs> oh, good morning, Emily. Hey, sir. Uh, Colonel, what are you doing, buying yourself a store? No, not this morning, Mr. Flanders. Just sign here, Colonel. Oh, um, Mr. Austin, why don't I uh, drop by and pick up that uh, other item later? <laughs> Just as easy to do it now. Well, thank you very much, but uh, I'll come back. Miss Emily, if you are through, I would be honored to walk you home. That's very kind of you. Oh, uh, when can I expect delivery on the plow? Uh, within ten weeks, Mr. Austin. All right. Don't forget the 750. I won't, Mr. Austin. Be assured of it. Oh, I beg your pardon, Colonel. Do I understand that you're selling Austin a plow? Plows, Mr. Flanders, plows. 750 of them, to be precise. 750 plows? Exactly. Mr. Austin should triple his money within six months. You see, it's a brand new item which has just been released on the market by a firm which I hope to organize. Since Mr. Austin is a friend of Mr. Cartwright's, I thought I'd do him a small favor. Well, that was very generous of you. Uh, Colonel, uh, I know this country pretty well. Why, Austin couldn't sell 750 plows around here in 10 years. Well, I wouldn't be too certain of that were I you, Mr. Flanders, particularly in view of uh, certain negotiations in which I am involved. Oh, what kind of negotiations? He hey, said, don't be so inquisitive. What were you going to say, Colonel? Can I trust you to be discreet, Mr. Flanders? Why, of course. I'm involved in a project of vast importance. What kind of project? Transportation. You mean a railroad? Well, please, no more for the moment. I, uh, don't press me further. Well, you've taken Austin in. I mean, that's why he's, uh, buying all those plows from you, isn't it? After all, Colonel, I'm a friend of Ben Cartwright's, too. Uh, no more right now, I beg you. Of course. Really, Ace, I'm ashamed of you. Well, Emily, business is business. Right, Colonel? But not at the expense of manners. Come along, Colonel. Mr. Flanders. I'm sorry that our acquaintance has been so brief. Then you really are leaving tomorrow. Yes, I'm afraid that I must. This is a bit forward, but since you are leaving so soon, perhaps I can be forgiven. Could we have lunch again, Colonel? Well, I don't know, Emily. I, uh, I do have some unfinished business with Mr. Austin. Please. Only this time, instead of your taking me to the restaurant, I'll have Martha fix us a picnic basket and we can go out by the lake. Why, that sounds splendid. I haven't been on a picnic for a long time. You've made this a very lovely afternoon, Miss Emily. Oh, just Emily, please. It has been lovely. I don't remember when I've known such peace and contentment. 
I hate the thought of leaving. Do you have to? Yes. Will you be coming back, Frank? That's hard to say, Emily. I don't suppose a man like you finds many attractions in Virginia City. Oh, that's where you're wrong. I have found more genuine friendship here in a day or so than I dreamed possible. You see, Emily, I'm actually a very lonely man. I find that hard to believe. Well, why don't you just stop? Settle down someplace. I can't, Emily. Surveying for your old railroad that important? Sorry, I, I guess I shouldn't have mentioned that. It's a secret, isn't it? It's silly, isn't it? That I have to keep secrets, even from you? Emily, a man can be trapped by responsibilities. Building bridges, digging tunnels, uh, deciding railroad rights of way. Those are very important things, aren't they? There's more to it than that. Now, that's all I know how to do. If you could, would you stop traveling? Like a shot. But it's not very practical, I'm afraid. There goes a colonel in Emily Colfax. He gets around pretty good for a stranger in town. Well, he probably seems exciting to Emily. She's led quite a lonely life these past few years. Colonel and his talk about big secret deals. I can't figure him. Then don't try, eh, sir? Maybe you better use your time helping me figure the taxes on the Smathers sale. Ah, that's penny ante stuff. That's the trouble with you, Will. You don't think big like Ben Cartwright or even the Colonel. You do the big thinking, Acer. I'll penny ante our living. Doesn't it strike you as a, as a coincidence that Ben Cartwright made a fast land deal with us just as the Colonel comes into town to scout for a railroad? Oh, Asa, from what you told me, the Colonel didn't really say all that. He didn't have to say it. It was plain without it. Uh, I tell you, Will, he and Ben are up to something. Then that's their business. Well, not when Ben Cartwright is using our land to make himself a nice fat profit, it's not. Where are you going? Acer. Acer, good to see you. Save me a trip. Oh, about that option on Alder Valley? Yep, got to exercise that option before the time runs out. We need that land pretty bad. Adam's already on his way with that crow track herd. Yeah, he got it all right. Sorry to hear that. I came out here to get that option back. Acer, we made a deal. I wouldn't have made that deal if I would have known what you and the Colonel were working on. Colonel and I aren't working on anything. <laughs> Colonel went to Sacramento yesterday. I just talked to him this morning. Oh. Well, I guess he's selling some of his farm equipment. How about that other thing? That uh, secret project he's working on? What are you talking about, Asa? Emily Colfax, that land of hers. He wouldn't be trying to do something with that, would he? Like the right of way to a railroad? Asa, what the devil are you talking about? All right. If that's the way you want to leave it. But I'm sure going to talk to a lawyer about getting that option back. It's all that talk about the real route and the colonel, Paul. I don't know. I'm sure going to find out. Oh, hello, Emily. Dad, 
again. Uh, do you know where I might be able to find Frank Metford? Won't tried... you come in? Well, I tried the hotel, and they said they didn't know anything about him there. <laughs> I've been trying to tell you he's here. Now will you come in? Oh, thank you. He's upstairs washing up. I invited him to dinner. Oh, well, uh, perhaps I'd better come oh, back. No, will you join us? No, I... thank you. I, I really just want a word with him. I'm so pleased you introduced us. He's certainly a fascinating gentleman. Well, I'm glad that you're getting along so well. Why, Ben, I didn't expect to see you. Well, I didn't expect to see you either, Frank. Uh, I checked all around town, went to the hotel, and they didn't oh, see Oh, yes. You. Well, they were full up. I had to go to a rooming house. Uh, may I, Emily? Certainly. Well, Ben, uh, what is it? Well, uh... Thank you. Asa Flanders came out to see me, and he started talking about some project that you and I are supposed to be involved in. Asa uh, Flanders? Yeah. He must be imagining things. Well, he seemed pretty positive, so... I... Oh, I don't know where he could get hold of such a wild idea, Ben. Ben, you're suspecting me of something. Oh, no, no, not a Frank. No, of course not, really. Now, admit it. No, of course I am not. Emily, what do you do with a man like that? Ben, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You know, Ben, this must all stem from a uh, slight misunderstanding which occurred at the general store this morning. Asa Flanders was there. He must have misinterpreted some of the things that I said. Well, well, I know Asa. He's full of suspicions and, and frustrations. That, well, it must have happened that way. However, if anything does come up, rest assured you'll be in on it. That's very kind of you, Frank. Uh, look, why, why stay in a rooming house? Why not come back to the Ponderosa? Well, I, I'm leaving tomorrow anyway, then. Oh. I suppose we can't ask you to stay any longer, can we? We'll make sure that we see each other before we leave. Count on it. Emily? Goodbye, Ben. Frank, Ben. Frank, I didn't know you were leaving so soon. Well, I don't want to, Emily, but I have no choice. What about your railroad project? Our little secret? Well, I've done all I can on that, my dear. Now I really must be moving along. Frank, would you call for me in the morning with my buggy? I'd like to show you something. What are you scheming? You'll see. And now come in to dinner, or Martha will have our scalps. Miss Emily. Good morning, Emily. I was just coming to have a word with you. Perhaps later. The Colonel and I are going for a drive in the country. The Colonel seems to enjoy looking at the neck of the woods. I'll be frank with you, Colonel. My brother and I'd like to be cut into that railroad deal of yours. Well, my dear Mr. Flanders, I've already explained to you I'm not at liberty to discuss that matter. Really, Asa? Well, as I said, Emily, business is business. Just tell me one thing, Colonel. What direction is that railroad coming into town? I'm sorry, I can't tell you anything at all. And now we must be going. Stop here, Frank. Ooh. Ooh. place. What is it? It's mine. My father left it to me when he died. Why, it's beautiful, Emily. There's over 4,500 acres here. No one's living here? No one's working it? No. It seems a shame. You know, if it had been me, I would have had the house on that knoll right over there. I've had my eye on that very spot. Grass and you've got water all year round. Why, you could run 200, 300 head of cattle here with no trouble at all. 
Look at that meadow over there. That meadow is crying for corn and wheat. You'll still have plenty of room for your kitchen crop. Oh, Emily, there's so much that could be done here. Yes. But it takes a man to do it. Frank, I know this isn't very big or very important after the kind of things you've been doing. But I, I thought that... I know what you're thinking, Emily. And I thank you for it. But you should forget about me. I wouldn't be worthy of you. Not worthy? Don't you think you ought to let me decide that? Emily, there are things about me that you don't know. I'm sure there are. I can't imagine there's anything so dreadful that it would make me change my feelings. I know myself. And once you came to know me, your feelings would change, believe me. But when you love someone, what they've been or done in the past is unimportant. No, Emily, no! I'm saying this for your own good. Please, forget me. I see. Well, I... I guess I found out what's really important to you. Would you drive me home, please? down about 12 miles out. Adam said he'd drive him into the valley sometime tomorrow. Oh, that's great news. That's really good news. How is Adam? Oh, he's fine. Crew's all right, too. Good. What about the cattle? Uh, the cattle are just so-so right now, but they've been two days without water. You give him a couple of days in that valley, you won't find better-looking stock anywhere. Oh, that's great news. Great news. First thing in the morning, we're going to take these supplies out to Adam. Listen, he said he wanted one of Hop Singh's apple pies and uh, some coffee he doesn't have to chew. <laughs> hey, look. Why wait till tomorrow? How come little Joe and I don't load it up and take it on out there now, Paul? That's a wonderful idea. Uh, go tell Hopson to get that apple pie ready. <laughs> Will do. <laughs> well, this is a surprise. Oh, oh. Ah, watch this. I have never seen such two beaming faces. Ben, we have wonderful news. Frank and I are going to be married. Yeah. <laughs> well, aren't you going to congratulate us, Ben? Well, of course I am, of course. <laughs> ben, you should have warned me. The Colonel just swept me off my feet. Well, this day is just full of the best news. Uh, when, when's a big occasion? Tomorrow at noon. Really? Well, we've made all the arrangements, and my wedding dress is ready. Well, of course. Why not? The sooner the better. Ben, I'd like you to give me away. Emily, I, I'd be honored. Frank, you don't have a best man. Well, no, not now, Ben. I was hoping you, but... Uh... Hoss! Hoss is the man for you. And, and, and both of you, please, you must do me this favor. Please be married here in the Ponderosa. Well, Ben, we had planned to be married at Emily's house. I... Well, after all, I did bring you two together. Oh, ben, we couldn't impose on you. Emily, I insist. Please. Thank you for everything, Ben. It's so beautiful. Now, Martha, you mustn't cry now. Miss Emily, I've saved my tears for your wedding for eight years. Don't deny me now. Oh, I'm so happy. 
Right over there, sir. Right, Buck. Yes, sir. What with the music, all the ladies crying, ain't nothing like a wet music. Huh? Oh, hey, Wonder why we don't have one of our own around here, then. Paul, what I meant is, I like weddings as a spectator only. Now, you know what he means. He likes to kiss the bride without paying the price. Oh, come on, let's get dressed. If you're going to drink, go over to the saloon. This office is for work. I've been working well. I've been studying. I've been studying how Ben Cartwright stole this land from us. And then that lawyer Nelson saying we can't do nothing about it. Once and for all, Acer, will you get off that subject? We made a deal fair and square. Now stop trying to make something else out of it. Nights that I lay awake, thinking, planning, so that I'd know the chance, the big one, when it came. And then they stole it. Right out from underneath our nose. Asa, you sicken me. You're brooding over missed chances. Where do you think it's going to get you? Better than thinking like a penny pinching bookkeeper all the time. My penny pinching bookkeeper's mind is what's kept us solvent and respectable all these years. But this time I'm right, Will. Can't you see that a railroad right away through our valley could, could bring us a fortune? If I could only get that land back. We made the deal. Now get those suspicions out of your greedy little mind. Go home and sober up. How much longer do we have to wait? Well, till the bride's ready, Colonel. You might as well get used to waiting. You've got a lot of doof now. Hello, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, Miss Altman, Miss Blanchard. Don't the Colonel make a mighty handsome bridegroom, though? He certainly does. Colonel, stop your worrying. Why, you used to dodge bullets in battle. They tell me that getting married ain't much worse. Oh, you really are helpful. <laughs> well, it's a part of the tradition, Joe. You're supposed to sort of jubilate the bridegroom. <laughs> Like, uh, forgetting the ring. Oh, come on. Boss, you didn't. No, just teasing you, Colonel. Got it right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. It's your last chance to run for the door. No, no. Not for anything in this world. Please. I came here to get our land back. We're having a wedding here. This is no time to discuss business. I say it is. You cheated us out of Alder Valley. No, we'll, we'll discuss it later. We'll discuss it now. I want that option back. Okay, sir. I have 3,000 head of cattle due late today. I'm not going to let those cattle die because of some fool notion in your head. We have a deal and that's that. But you really wanted that land for a railroad right away. You and the Colonel been conniving ever since he came into town. He said, you're drunk now, please. What's... Admit it! You've been talking about that railroad coming through town. You said that he was involved in it. Now, are you going to deny that? I certainly am. My business here is my private affair. You have no right to question me. Asa, you've been prying into the Colonel's business ever since he came into town. Asa, we've had enough of this. Now, please get out. You're all in this together. But I'm going to get the truth out of you, Cartwright. You Cartwrights think you can get away with anything. But this time you're going to find out you're wrong. Flanders, listen to me. 
Nobody stole your land for a railroad right away. Believe me. Believe you? Why should I believe you? Because there is no railroad. Because there is no right of way. You see, Asa? It was all in your imagination. You, you dreamt it up. Now, please, let us get on with the wedding. And it was you, Colonel. You're nothing but a liar. Everything that you said is nothing but a pack of lies. Well, what about it, Colonel? Yes, that's right. Nothing but a pack of lies. Frank, you don't have to answer such a ridiculous statement. It's not a ridiculous statement, Emily. At last, someone is telling the truth, Ben. I did allow him to think I was surveying for a railroad. I did allow him to think that you were in on it. I lied, just as he says. Fool out of everybody. Hey, sir. I'm sorry, Ben. I'm, so, I'm sorry about everything. But if he was my friend. I'd run him out of town on a rail. cares about an old railroad. No, it's not just the railroad, Emily. I lied about everything. I'm nobody. I don't know any of those important people I talked about. I'm not a director in a company. I... I'm just Frank Medford, a traveling salesman. Because, Ben, ever since those days in Nicaragua when I was a so-called hero, when the village girls cheered us as liberators, nothing exciting, nothing important has ever happened to me. You felt you had to try to keep on being a hero, make yourself important by lying. You didn't have to do that, Frank. Not for me. I tried not to, Ben. That first day that I saw you in Virginia City, I was trying to get away. I tried to leave after that. But then I was trapped. And then I needed to be someone important. Someone like you. You are everything I ever wanted to be. And you've done everything I ever wanted to do as a man. One thing I did not lie about, Ben. I love Emily. With all my heart.
bed. I don't want to hear any excuses for it. Excuses? I think what Frank did today took courage. A tremendous amount of courage. What he did in Nicaragua took a lot of courage. But what he did today, he humiliated himself before the very people whose respect and admiration he needed. That took a greater kind of courage. Ben, I'm a woman. Something more important. A few minutes ago, I was going to be married to a man I thought loved me. He does love you. That's the, the one truth in his life. Truth? I've got to be sure. How do I know he wasn't lying when he said he loved me? Emily, tell me something. Have you been happy these past eight years? Since that young man died on the eve of what was to have been your wedding? You know I haven't. Well, haven't you used your grief as a crutch to keep going? Well, Frank uses his lies as a crutch. I don't say he's right. But maybe we all need some kind of crutch occasionally. Five minutes ago, you said you loved him. Now, have your feelings changed so completely in so short a time? I don't know. How will I ever know if... If he loves you, trust him. Give him a chance to prove it. Emily. There isn't much time. Frank, we have some unfinished business. Give me those bags. Emily, I... Now, you heard what Ben said. Emily, you know the kind of man I am. Yes, I know. But you're also the kind of man who is going to marry me. In spite of all you know, you still want to marry me? Yes. I love you, Frank. Frank, I always thought you were a man of action. Thank you, Frank. <laughs> 